Welcome to Shinni Vachamishi. Today we're going to talk about who the Rebbe gave a bracha and sent to college from Yeshiva. And how do you know and able to identify if you're one of those Bachrim? Our method of figuring this out is we're going to have, we're going to use uh, three Mashpim, two Paskim, and three scientists that were chosen by uh, the Rebbe. Scientists that are influenced by the Rebbe's personal uh, scientists uh, that were chassidim. Okay. We're also going to be coming out with a book soon about the Rebbe's personal scientists and what the Rebbe told them about um, the future. Sorry about that. I'll never leave you like that in the trunk. Chazal tell us, Ushua b'dayv yoyetz. When you have m- much, many advice, you get a good um, salvation, I guess. You get a good result. So, in our method, we're gonna, the method of knowing we're going to use is uh, not just many, because you can have many of the same type who have the same information. Uh, and that's probably not what Chazal had in mind. They probably had in mind that you should have one philosopher one scientist uh, of, of one field, a scientist of another, and all this information lends itself, and that's the process of uh, getting the best knowledge. Even if you were to look for one, one field, like a historian, you would want to get as many historians possible to give you the same account, and then you'll see which seems most... Um, not most plausible, but most uh, accurate and, 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 and most likely. Um, so, the, the Rebbe's bracha to, to uh, Professor Hazan on the Joys of Science series, which is a non-traditional way of teaching science, is, was specifically designed to teach the Tmimim and the Shluchim this was during the MEMS, how to apply the method of science to Hafata Samayana's chutzah. As the Mimer says, chutzah she'en chutzah me chutzah imena. I remember uh, hearing a speech by Mayor Zarchi, and he said, the goal of Hasidus is that it should be part of the universities. It should be part of the academic system. That's the goal of Hafatsa Samayanas. Not that you come and it's a, you're making a religious delivery of, of pamphlets or, or, or you're selling books to uh, people who are interested in checking it out. But that this should be L'Chadchila uh, Ribir, not L'Chadchila Arunter. So how do we know if the Rebbe wants you to go to university? Um... Let's see if I'm wrong. The first way is to ask. Uh, if you don't know how to ask, um, then uh, all attempts are, are not going to help you. But if you start asking, and you start uh, tasting and trying different fields of knowledge, then you know if you are not just built and capable, but you are chosen by a kavon al to be the Rebbe's soldier and the Rebbe's scientist. You might call this Hashgacha Pratis, but I'm passing by a friend's house. He was raised in Satmer. And when he, when he was a child, his father didn't allow him to learn Kabbalah. He wanted to learn Tanya. He was 11 years old. So he would go up to a treehouse in the summer and in the treehouse he had his Tanya in there packed in a plastic and he would study it in the treehouse and leave the Tanya there and go back home. His father thought Tanya is Kabbalah and you can't touch it till you're 40. So $50,000 he spent on a building a treehouse with a, with a whole, um, if you can, I, I don't know if I could zoom it because I'm reversing the video. So... Um, 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 maybe we're going to go up when, when he's home. I'll show you the treehouse next time. And in, in this treehouse is from when he was a child. It has to be at least 45 years ago. 
when he wanted to learn the Tanya and uh, of Rabbi Shnei Zalman of Liadi, and his father thought the Tanya is Kabbalah, and Kabbalah you can't do till you're 40. How many mistakes did his father make? Just, um, just errors in the in the facts, not the fact that you he, he gave him permission or not. That's not the issue. How many factual errors did his father have? Same for you. If you're looking in uh, into going into the academic circles, you if you ask enough people enough times, you you wouldn't have that problem and that mistake that he had. But this is a sentimental thing, this treehouse that he built. With the, with the, he has a little house in it, and it's like a library. And uh, it reminds him of his youth. And when he reads Tanya in there, it's a complete time machine, where he literally goes back to when he was 11 years old, and he opened the Tanya. And he looked in the front and the back, and he would see the Alter Rebbe combining Nigle and Soid, and, 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 and combine it, and ask a question, and answer it. And he still remembers it today without looking inside. He remembers exactly how he read it then. So, we're going to cover what is, uh, what is education, what is university, and what is um, uh, logic, logic, what is a logic system, like a Sefer Higayin, that, we, that you know from the Litvisha world, and what is critical thinking and what is the magical paper that they claim they give you after which uh, um, most scientists don't find that to be uh, a big deal it's a paper the paper says you were there it doesn't prove anything but if you take your studies seriously then without the paper you will have something that will enrich your life as a person and whatever you give will be uh, enlightening to others as opposed to not having that so that's really what it means it's not about the paper it's not about um, if some people uh, say these things and they're myths that we have to um, um, the only reason why we have to address these myths is because uh, uh, people believe in it and our concern is humanity so if uh, innocent uh, gullible people believed it we take we deal with it not not because there's any credibility not because it's 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 anything but foolish, but because um, s some innocent people will believe it, so we have to confront it. The belief in the magical paper of uh, the university is uh, similar to the belief in the magical paper of Smicha, which Smicha itself comes from a secular concept from the Christians who invented the book, the Codex. What we have today, the, the book in the bound uh, way that you set on the shelf is an invention from Christianity or that era. And uh, it, uh, the paper doesn't guarantee anything. And uh, so does the smiche. So one chassid was telling his son, go get your smiche because it's going to give you a koyach to be makar of yidin. That's also a magical claim. And uh, probably uh, just think about it and you'll see it, it doesn't hold any water. The Rebbe said to get smicha, but the Rebbe, I don't think the Rebbe said to know it and study it and 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 and, and, and spend time on it. You go to the one who gives you the smicha, and his job is to give it. Your job is to get it. But I don't see why you should um, study something that's not going to be. Uh, it's not urgent. You could study it later when you have an interest in the taruvis and basa b'chalav. I remember a short story, we were in the Hermitage in St. Petersburg in the museum, a group of Bachram on our shlichus. And uh, there was um, elderly women that were watching each uh, exhibit, making sure no one takes any flash pictures and no one touches the art. And one of them saw uh, foreign students and she asked uh, the group, what are you studying? And uh, why did you come from America to uh, Russia to study? So it would probably take a while for us to explain to her what shlichus is and what smich is. So Mendy Pinson, which is a very clever and uh, clever-witted and, and a sense of humor that he had. So with both of that, he said to her, We came from New York here to study the laws of mixing milk and meat. And uh, 
besides for her being confused, the Hevra had a good laugh. But now for a moment to take it seriously, uh, what the time we waste uh, is um, is nothing. You could just it's never too late to, to, to add life is uh, is longer these days. It used to be shorter before we had the science. So we can always start. I remember one guy came to do Smith in Minnesota. He was uh, 70 years old. So you can always catch up on on the science that you that you lost. But I think the beginning of your life in your 20s is a good time to start. Because why go all those years without it? I'm going to put in a, a few links below into what the, the, the agenda will be for, for what we're going to try and figure out. Thank you for watching and welcome to Sheni B'chamishi. It's a beautiful day. Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day you have given us. Let us rejoice in it. And uh, Father in Heaven, whatever is seen and unseen, we love you. Send us more money in the bank.